All right, so let's get into the past of what we know to be true and what we've uncovered and discovered under the sea, under the water. Was the water the great flood? Was that the biblical flood that occurred in 1810, 1811, 1812 under the Great Reset? That's what we're getting into today. And we already have evidence that over a thousand years ago that the waters were much lower, two, three hundred feet lower as the island of California went out 200 miles where, from where it is today. And that's down, that sea shelf is about 200 miles out going out from the uh, west coast is is about 200 feet deep and here you see pictures in egypt in japan great pyramids underwater look at how big the steps are folks were these for the giants were these where the giants lived before the great floods came that's what we're going to get into today but the evidence is overwhelming overwhelming that there was mass civilization style buildings before all over the world um, it's very reasonable and prone to understanding, especially when you consider that the four plans included 13 to 16 foot ceilings and similar sized doors. Again, giants, building for giants. Seeing these old buildings, we rarely think about the work designing them, but there's no computer aided design CAD back then. It was a drawing board, pencil, eraser, ropes, and sticks and poles. Uh, we do not think about these builders having any building and construction equipment of today. At some point, a railroad was introduced, and some of those buildings were constructed not far from a body of water. But at the same time, quite a few were built with no luxury of railroads or ports. So how did they make thousands of windows in the 17th and 19th centuries, 18th? They're where mountains of bricks, block-shaped stones came from with their incredible, incredible design and detail. Where roofing materials came from, or who sculpted those stairwell posts, making them 100% identical? Wondering observer might spend a moment thinking about all these things, but most people will not. The Europe had clearly had a century or two head start on the rest of the world, but the so-called colonial expansion produced such ridiculous amounts of these buildings, I struggle to find any conventional explanation. Tens of thousands of similar style buildings popped up all over the world within a very, very short period of time. Very often in places thought appropriate where any thought of appropriate infrastructure would be ludicrous. The Industrial Revolution did not follow or kick in until the 1830s to 1840s. One additional thing to consider is the world population in 1900 was 78% less than it is today, and I don't think everyone was a construction worker. Most of the time, our opinion about the past is based on books and movies and not on facts. The period of the Wild West was from 1865 to 1895, and everybody sold us that it was on wagon trains, Manifest Destiny, coming across uh, the continental uh, Great Salt Lake to go over the Sierras to the 1849 Gold Rush in California. So below you'll find similar architecture and from all over continents. All these buildings are masterpieces of architectural design and implementation. History assigned architects for most of them, but you will not find any concrete proof or any sort of construction for approximately 99% of these buildings. Some of these buildings still exist, exist today, but more, majority of them do not. That's what we'll get into the floods here. A good portion was deliberately destroyed in the so-called urban fires and earthquakes, but all these buildings appear to share the same architectural school. I believe as recently as 150 to 200 years ago, there was a one world union and no countries. It was a civilization whose technical development was similar to that of ours. <clears throat> I'm not saying that this was good or bad. I just state in the 19th century, the entire world was fighting. Why, while it would have, have to be building to get all those buildings and cities delivered. I do believe the current political system the world conquered and destroyed the previous one. In the process, billions, let me say that again, in the process, billions of people were killed. These buildings were seen all over the world and are remnants of the previous civilization. Uh, it says he's still working on it about the history. So basically we lied to. So look at the architecture, folks. It's all this Greco-Roman, they say. It was just, it's in Japan, it's in Taiwan, it's in Argentina, Cuba, all at the same time, Chile, Paraguay, United States. You know, how did they build these huge, magnificent buildings with these cupolas, Russia, Iran, Poland, Vietnam, Pakistan, India, South Africa, Thailand, Turkey, Sri Lanka, Germany, Ukraine, it goes on China. It's all the same, folks. 
It's all the same design. Did these just pop out in the past and since the, the early, you know, beginning of the 20th century, the 1900s, all of a sudden they settled and popped all these exactly similar alike buildings with Roman Greek structure, architecture? We've been lied to on such a massive scale, it's almost impossible to get our heads around it. So switching gears a little bit, big credit to John Levy here. He's helping educate me. He's got this website here, which has these... Um, and here you can see all his work he's done recently. Uh, ancient Modern Tech, San Francisco Reset. I mean, this is all just great information we need to glean from here because he's doing some fabulous, fabulous work on uncloaking the whole great reset of the 1812s, uh, early 1800s, which let's get into this a little bit more. Now, how many of you have heard of Napoleon's Comets? So this is just I'm learning about as well. Uh, it's a character by Thomas Roldenson from 1807 showing John Bull representing England looking on a comet and trained Napoleon. Uh, it goes back 200 years the Napoleonic era of the early 18th century where they had two great comets that appeared four years apart, which was during a time of the Great Conflict. And there's so much going on at this time. We talked about the War of 1812, Napoleon's War, the Battle for the United States, the U.S. versus England, eight, Battle of 1812, 1812, 1811. Well, here, look at this, folks. The year 1811 started off with an amazing sight, one not many humans are, quote, lucky enough to see in their lifetimes. Remember that word, lucky. The Great Comet of 1811 was first spotted on March Season of Sacrifice, 1811, and intensity increased December 11th, uh, December uh, 1811. Get it? 9-11. Some recordings show it had tails 25 degrees long and a head 50% larger than the sun. Okay? Given the heliocentric measurement, it's huge. Okay? So the comet appears to some observers of fade, perform frightening acrobatics, and split into two. This could be part of the meme they're putting in the crop circles, which are radio frequency lasers. They just imprint into the ground. We know that now. Uh, so the comets were entitled in Amazing Entities. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. Unfortunately for those in the New Madrid, New Madrid, Arkansas, in December 1811, I am not convinced this was a comet made of ordinary matter. Let's just call him the devil for now. The massive New, Dr New Madrid earthquake began in December 1811 and continued through the spring of 1812. The comet appeared to leave in 1812, although there is some uncertainty as whether it really left entirely. Uh, in 1893, Norbert Herz reported what seems to be evidence of significant per perturbation to the orbit of the great comet. Uh, so he had working under 984 observations published monthly about this great comet that comet that came into uh, existence in 1811 developed a tail 100 million miles long. How do they measure that? So this is as Napoleon was marching into Russia with his 700,000 strong army. So is this Napoleon going up to take over the great Tartarian Empire with his 700,000 strong men? Is that what was really happening? Well, at the same time, there's these things going in the sky, we'll get into a little bit more, which created a primordial dark matter is thought to exist. By early 1812, the Earth's steady state spiraled into seven years of major climate disruption, including 1816's, quote, the year without a summer, we'll get into in a minute. So also, large volcanic eruptions during that same time, very large, 1812 in the Caribbean, 1812 in Indonesia, 1813, Japan, 1814, the Philippines. These are large scale eruptions. These are over six, six and a half on the Richter scale, folks. These are large ones. Then we had a huge one, Mount Tambora eruption in the islands of the Dutch Indies. And it goes on. The unusual climate aberrations of 1816 had the greatest effect on the northeastern United States, Atlantic Canada, and parts of Western Europe. Seismic events going on everywhere, folks, and we'll get into that. Um, and also here, let me bring another attention. There were tsunamis. 
This is off the coast of California, which may have created the end of the island of California. It's kind of my point here is that that research I was do, I'm doing was trying to find out when California became an island. It looks like it started 1812 and all these cataclysmic events and all these stories of world wars around the world were all taking place at the exact same time. Well, check this out. A tsunami is a series of waves most commonly used by an earthquake beneath the sea floor. And we just showed all these massive earthquakes can travel at 700, 600 miles an hour. Since 1812, the California coast has had 14 tsunamis with waves 8, 3 to 6 feet. The channels were hit by a big tsunami in the early 1800s. More evidence. So let's get into the year without a summer. This is a, the font of all knowledge Wikipedia, but you still learn stuff from this. You take what you can, glean what you want. Use your discernment and judgment to take what's relative. So they're suggesting that it was a volcanic event that happened in 1815. Now remember they're talking about the comets of 1811 before the Napoleon comet, which could have been Black Rahu. It could have been the Black Sun that took over and caused uh, this, these anomalies or these changes, mass changes at this one period of time. And we don't hear about this stuff in history. So the great eruption of Mount Tambor in the East Indies is blamed for this year uh, year without summer though it's not been proven in any way uh it's called it the last great subsistence crisis in the western world and we're going to hit the next one as soon as the next uh, vision 2020 i'm predicting when they're going to turn off the lights they're going to see because the owls see in the dark do what thou wilt turn off the light turn them back on and everybody's on electric power that's what i'm predicting for 2020 perfect vision in the spring of summer of 1816 a persistent dry fog was observed in the parts of eastern United States. The fog reddened and dimmed the sun, such that sunspots were visible to the naked eye. Neither wind nor rainfall dispersed the fog. It has been characterized as stratospheric sulfate aerosol veil. Now, what are we seeing over here in California after these fires up in paradise here, Sacramento, I'm calling it chem fog. We had eight days in a row that blanketed the entire northern California um, uh, right after the uh, the alleged campfires that spread all the way across the entire Northern California it was over 3,000 feet thick when I threw through it, flew through it. So this could be the same dry fog. Maybe they're planning another one of these events. The real problem may lay in the weather's effect on crops and thus on the supply of food and firewood. Got food, folks? On June 6th, snow fell in June 6th. Snow fell in Albany, New York, Densville, Maine. Cape May, New Jersey, frost was reported five nights in a row in late June, causing extensive crop damage. Uh, this is in New Lebanon, New York, May 1816. All was frozen. The hills were barren like winter. Temperatures went below freezing almost every day in May. The ground froze on June 9th. June 12th, the shakers had to replant crops. June 7th, it was so cold, everything had stopped growing. They had frost again on August 23rd, as did much of the upper northeast. It was so cold that crops were cut down, even to freezing to their roots. Bread became scarce. People were obliged to rely on their own resources. Listen up, people. Own resources to rely on upon other and others in their immediate locality. Look, touch, and feel communities, folks. Build your community where you live. Get your food supplies. Find your tribe. In July and August, Lake and River ice was observed as far south as northwestern Pennsylvania. Frost was reported as far south as Virginia on August 20th and 21st. Rapid, dramatic temperature swings were common. Listen to this. With temperatures sometimes reverting from normal above normal temperatures as high as 95 degrees or 35 degrees Celsius to near freezing within hours. Within hours. Oh, you never heard about any of this? Why? Thomas Jefferson retired from the presidency in Monticello and sustained crop failures that further sent him into debt. Sidebar here, all of Thomas's books were uh, taken by the Congress because he owed so much money, and that's how the Library of Congress was founded with Thomas Jefferson's library. All right, so it's now in the middle of July. We've not had it properly called anything properly called a summer. Easterly winds have prevailed for three months. The sun during that time has generally been obscured and the sky overcast with clouds. Do we have geoengineering doing that today, folks? The air has been damp and uncomfortable. Yes, it has. And frequently so chilling as to render the fireside a desirable retreat. Happened in Europe, too. It was not just the United States. Low temperatures, heavy rains resulted in crop failures. 
Famines, Britain, Ireland, families in Wales traveled long distances begging for food. Famine was present in North and Southwest Ireland following the failure of wheat, oat, and potato harvests. In Germany, the crisis was so severe, food prices rose sh sharply. Switzerland, summers of 1816 and 1817, folks. This wasn't just a, a one-year event or a one-off event. This went on. I mean, we talked about from, from 1811. We've got floods. We've got earthquakes. We've got comets or, or whatever, whatever, tsunamis. I mean, these were major upheaval events going on around the world. Let's move on. In Asia, and in China, the cold weather killed trees, crops, even water buffalo in the north. Floods destroyed many remaining crops. Now note this is all in the north, up the northern areas. The monsoon season was disrupted, resulting in overwhelming floods in the Yangtze Valley. In India, the delayed summer monsoon caused late torrential rains that aggravated the spread of chlora, chloria uh, from a region near the Ganges in Bengal as far as Moscow. It went from India to Moscow, folks. And then the aberration of the Mount Tambora volcano, April 5th to 15th, 1815. And then the other large volcanic uh, activities that went on, as we said, here in 1809, we had the Southern Pacific Ocean. Look at these volcanic activities. Um, oh, this is sulfate concentration, sorry. But look at these activities. 1809, 1812, the Caribbean. 1812, East Indies. 1830, Japan. 1814. Um, as well, and they say the surface temperature caused a temporary drop on an average of about one degree Celsius. This was at the end of what they called the Little Ice Age. So huge major upheavals. All right, so the premise is that in 1812, 1811, there was a great reset on the world. All the world maps, uh, the ancient maps are showing the world quite differently than the maps of today. So is this when the great lie started, the great reset started of Earth, especially with California and the other areas, the Great Lakes, uh, some of these others have gotten into. But here, listen to this. So this is the new Madrid earthquakes. Now remember, prior to this time, uh, the island of California was called uh, uh, Nuevo California or Alt California, like an alternative California. Uh, the new Madrid earthquakes were the biggest earthquakes in American history. They occurred in the central Mississippi Valley, but were felt as far away as New York, Boston, Montreal, and Washington. President Madison and his wife felt them in the White House. It happened in Missouri, and they felt it in the White House. Church bells rang in Boston. December 16, 1811, again, December 12, 911, March of 1812, there were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest, and between 6,000 to 10,000 earthquakes in the Bothfield of Missouri, where the New Madrid is located near the junction of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Now, what do we have there, folks? We have all the, 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 the uh, ancients. They have all their, their pyramids, their land pyramids there and whatnot, right there in the Mississippi, Mississippi rivers in Ohio. In the known history of the world, no other earthquakes have lasted so long or produced much evidence of damage as the New, New Madrid earthquakes. In known history, Nothing like this has ever occurred to this extent. Think about that. Three of the earthquakes are on the list of America's top earthquakes. December 16, 1811, 8.1. Right? Secondary, January 23rd, 7.8. And on January 7th, 1812, as much as 8.8 .8 magnitude. Now, to give you an idea, they're saying that the San Francisco earthquake is 7.9 to give you an idea of the numbers here. So you've got it equivalent to the San Francisco earthquakes, but I know that the, the this 7.9 they're showing on the San Francisco earthquakes was really uh, 6.7, 6.8 back when the Mandela effect has taken over that as well. I'm not gonna argue with anybody on it. I just know the number because I've studied the San Francisco earthquake extensively. And now the number says 7.9. All right, so again, moving on. So these huge earthquakes, how about the Mississippi running backwards? After the federal February 7th earthquake, boatmen reported the Mississippi actually ran backwards for several hours. The force of the land upheaval 15 miles south of New Madrid created Real Foot, Real Foot Lake, drowned the inhabitants of an Indian village, and turned the river against itself to flow backwards. Yeah, round spinning ball, folks. Come on, hey, all you heliocentrics, how does that work? Water flowing backwards. 
devastated thousands of acres of virgin forest and created two temporary waterfalls in the Mississippi. Can you say Ganges and uh, Euphrates? Boatmen on flatboats survived the experience and lived to tell. After the general experience, more than 2,000 earthquakes in five months, people discovered most of the crevices opening up during an earthquake ran from north to south. And when the earth began moving, they would chop down trees in the east, direct, east and west direction, holding on using the trees as a bridge. There were missing people who were most likely swallowed up by the earth. Some earthquake fissures were as long as five miles long. The world's largest sand boil was created by the New Madrid earthquake, one and a half miles long by 136 acres, located in Missouri. The earthquake smog, the skies turned dark during the earthquakes, so dark that it lightened candle, the light lighted lamps didn't help. The air smelled bad and it was hard to breathe. It was speculated that the smog, smog, smog in 1800, containing dust particles caused by eruption of water into the cold air. So now they're bringing it on the earthquakes, causing the darkness. Sounds of distant thunder and loud explosions accompanied the earthquakes. Domestic animals became wild, and wild animals became tame. Snakes came out of the ground from hibernation. Flocks of ducks and geese landed near people. The earthquakes were preceded by the appearance of the Great Comet, which we talked about. The comet with an orbit of 3,065 years uh, was called the Tecumish Comet, or the Napoleon Comet, uh, after a Shawnee Indian leader whose name meant shooting star. So as we get into Rahu, during, the, during this time, the governor of Indiana, worried about the prophet's popularity, had challenged him to produce a miracle. After the day of the, quote, black sun, now, now Nero is the black sun that orbits around. We know the sun is a luminary, and the black sun is its binary sun, uh, Rahu. The black sun or Rahu, the brothers had no trouble attracting, attracting followers. A black sun was said to predict a future war. On September 17, 1811, there was another solar eclipse, which was predicted by the prophet. The Brothers of the Operations was, a prophet, was at Prophet's Town, located near the junction of Wabash and Tippecanoe Rivers in northern Indiana. On December 16th, when the earthquakes began, Tecumseh was at the Shawnee and Delaware Indian villages near Cape Girardeau, 50 miles north of the epicenter of, of New Madrid. The earthquake continued as he traveled back to Prophetstown, arriving on February 1812. His followers lost the Battle of Tippecanoe, and they continued to fight during the War of 1812 between the United States and Great Britain. He was killed in Canada in 1813 and honored as one of the greatest Indian heroes, both in the United States and Canada. Hey folks, and welcome to another very interesting video uh, that I'm putting together here with the help of a bunch of other truthers that are coming to the same understanding of another massive lie about uh, the Great Reset. The Great Reset was the biblical flood actually in the 1811s, 1812s. We're finding much, much evidence this is true. So let's get into it. What was happening in 1812? Well, we had the War of 1812. We, United States, fought the British over slavery, allegedly, but they kept, uh, you know, selling the textiles that were made down the cotton farms in the South and sending them back to Europe, and all the Freemasons were in on the, the, uh, the, the throwing the tea into the, to the Boston Tea Party. Those were all done by Freemasons. Alexander Hamilton, British nobility, was put into place, uh, and run the money system, who was part of Britain. They chose the exact same colors as the the British flag after the War of Independence. The White House is named after Andrew White, the first Archbishop, a Roman Catholic that landed in Jamestown on a boat called the Freemason. Look it up. Uh, United States, Rome uh, used to be Rome, Maryland, is now Washington, D.C. So that was the War of 1812, allegedly, when 55 rich white guys signed a contract, signed We the People. So if you owned land and you were white, male, you could vote. Everybody else, sorry. So all you that cite the Constitution, will you please think about that? All right, so what else was going on in 1812? Big year. Big year, 1812. Napoleon Bonaparte, the Patriot War of 1812. So here we got France is allegedly backing the United States. We're at war with Europe, England. England's at war with France. Napoleon's taken 600,000 troops up to Russia to take over the Tartarian Empire of Russia. 
600,000 troops, War of 1812, and then he goes and sets, uh, the, uh, sets uh, Moscow on fire. The Great Fire of 1812, September 12th, 1812, Napoleon sets the city on fire, and this was supposedly the great coup of Russia that destroyed Napoleon, why he didn't succeed. Well, it sure looks like he succeeded to me as well. Now, what happened also in the Bonaparte Wars of 1812, we also saw the coming to power of the Rothschilds. This was sanctioned by the Vatican. Rothschilds used to be uh, uh, Bayer uh, Meyer, uh, Herman uh, Meyer Rothschild became Rothschild, which means Red Shield, changed their name. Now, the story goes that in the Battle of Waterloo, since the Rothschilds had their banking system set up all around Prussia and other areas, they learned already who won the war between France and England. Yet they went to the London Stock Exchange. Now, the London Stock Exchange was already set up in 1812, folks. And they went down, he went down there and, and, and sold all, a lot of his stocks. Well, this caused everybody to say, oh, we must have lost the war. They would know. And panic selling ensued. The movie Trading Places that was uh, produced by Aaron Russo, who was killed for releasing the movie Freedom to Fascism, was the one that released Trading Places that was about this event, a modern day one. Uh, and so they ended up crashing the market some 90, 95%. Rothschilds bought it up at pennies on the dollar at the, at the help of the Vatican, and they made the equivalent of a trillion dollars. The deal was made that the Vatican gets the power, gets the power for allowing them to make all this money. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, all the Jews, they're called Court Hof Judens, folks. It's not the Jews, they're just the puppets. They are, they are culpable, but they're not the ones of the, the who we're talking about, they. It's the ones that behind them that wanted the power. The Vatican has all the money. They just wanted the power. So they gave the Rothschilds the power with all that money. And then the gunpowder plot of 1871, V for Vendetta, about the Jesuits, was all about that as well. And then on top of that, 1812, we have a war between Egypt and <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Okay, this was another war called the Wahhabi Wars. I mean, there was wars on wars on wars. And now let's get into the weather events, because this was a huge, huge time in history. Yet it's very, very underreported by pretty much everybody. So this is, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to California as an island dot org. Uh, this is great work done by this gentleman chronicling all the 200 or so maps, uh, that were are chronicling California. That was an island, how it was, where it was. It's very fascinating. But of course, we got to get back to the Jesuits, the Jesuits, the Jesuits. They're the ones running missions out here. But even they thought it was an island in California. The Jesuit order of the Catholic faith was charged with converting, converting the native people of California to a European style of living, whether you want to or not. Uh, so because of the failure by Kino, the Jesuits changed their message and negotiated with the King of Spain to have autonomy over their projects and control over the soldiers Spain provided for protection against, quote, hostile natives. No, you're the invasive species, you Jesuits. They were just protecting their homeland when you turned them into slaves. King Carlos agreed but told the Jesuits they would need to secure all funding they sell themselves. First mission was founded in 1697. California was believed by most to be an island despite the repeated explorations that failed to get beyond the Colorado River Delta. That's because it was an ocean at the time. Great Salt Lake, where did it get its salt? And the seashells that were found there. Maps well into the 1700s kept showing California as an island until Jesuit Patre Consang's expedition in 1746. The Jesuits desired to connect their California missions with those in Sonora on the Mexican mainland. The two Californias were not separated administratively until March 26, 1804, when all the stuff started to happen. The new nation of Mexico achieved its independence afterwards, 11 years after the War of Spain, 1821. The California mission survived during this period by trading with hunters, uh, foreign vessels, and among themselves. Mexico would secularize the Spanish missions, but the California missions were allowed to continue a distance from Mexico City. Two more missions were founded after 1821, one in Alta, California at Sonoma, and the final one in Baja in 1834. The United States would keep Alta, California after the war with Mexico until 1848, 
and they dropped the altar from the name California Peninsula would remain as part of Mexico and known as Baja California. So just in closing, just do a recap. This is from worldtimeline.info. doesn't include a lot of stuff, but you can get an idea of what's been going down here. So in 1810, Seville, Spain surrenders to the French. Argentina declares independence from Spain. Colombia declares independence. Chile declares independence. They're all breaking away from Spain. Russia settlers come to Fort Ross in San Francisco uh, in, in February 2nd of 1811. First U.S. colonists on the Pacific arrive at Cape Disappointment. Look at that name, Cape Disappointment, Washington. So here we see in 1811s the first Spaniards come around the horn or wherever they got here. Uh, flooding, <laughs> maybe riding the mud floods, who knows, or all the earthquakes. April 12th, first, uh, as we said, first colonist, May 10th, England adopts paper currency. Here we go, as current, uh, as currency during an economic crisis. This is why it's called a river bank currency, cash flow, deposit slips, all based on water, just like our legal systems based on water, ownership, partnership, relationship. Uh, we're always on ships, and then we got a docket and a bailiff. All right, May 14th, Paraguay gains independence from Spain. Venezuela and El Salvador are breaking away from Spain. December 16th, the first earthquakes, the New Madrid, Missouri, which we talked about, 7.2 to 8.1. 1812, New Madrid, Missouri gets hit with a 7 to 7.8. February, New Madrid, 7.4 to 8.2. All in succession, all over the course of less than two months, folks. Huge, major earthquakes. This is what popped up the Sierra Nevadas. This is what pushed the water away from the California coastline and buried 200 miles under 200 feet of water and made California not an island, but connected at Lake Tahoe, the Sierra Nevadas, with the rest of the country and no longer was an island. That's what we're conjecturing here. All right, March 15th, first Russian settlements come to the Russian River. Venezuela, 7.7 .7 earthquake, more turmoil. June 12th, Napoleon invades Russia, 600,000, 700,000 troops uh, into Russia on June 24th. Uh, he leaves on October 19th. He takes 700,000 troops up there, and he only lasts a couple months. Are you kidding me? December 8th, Southern California hits an earthquake, almost 7.0 at San Juan Capistrano Church, damaging the buildings. December 21st, Santa Barbara Channel, 7.1 earthquake. These are not, not small earthquakes. And I went the time periods before and after. Here's a volcanoes and Mayan we talked about. But for the most part, all of these events were in a very short time period between 1811 and 1813. The floods, the earthquakes, all the wars, 1812, the War of 1812 with the United States and Britain, the Napoleon War, all going on at the exact same time. And if you believe that. All right, so I've talked enough. I hope you got some insight. This fascinating material. I had to keep it long because there's so much information here to share. I just want to get it out there. So please uh, let me know what you thought about this in the comments. Revisionist history indeed. We're learning about the true, his, her story about what really happened here. And are we seeing a new kind of new Madrid happening where we've had the floods now? We've had the extreme weather changes now. We've had the extreme fires caused by directed energy weapons which could have been used way back then as well. We just don't know how long they've had this technology, folks. We know it goes back now to at least World War II. All right, so hope this, hopefully this helps. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace. And please love one another. Give people wide berth. When you talk about they not getting it, it's not nearly as important as do you get what's going on here because we're still all learning. So be patient with others. Peace.